In the Middle Ages, people had some pretty unhygienic practices. Let's dive into the most disgusting hygiene practices of medieval royal, Emperor Henry IV's bad breath. Marjorie de Valois, Henry's first wife, was unhappy about his lack of cleanliness or an insatiable appetite for raw garlic. Toothbrushing was also a rare occurrence in medieval Europe. They had many problems with foul breath because they drank heavily and mainly ate uncooked foods. Tossed human waste into castle moats. To anyone who enjoys fantasizing about life in a medieval castle, the presence of a moat is a dream coming true. This lake or river served as an additional defense for the fortress. In reality, this was foul water tainted with human waste from those residing in the castle. The castle's sewage system, referred to as the guard ropes, discharged into the moat through a drain on the ground floor. The real reason people started using canopies as beds. Don't you adore the settings of period dramas? Every piece of furniture in a royal mansion seems like something out of a fairy tale. Gorgeous four-poster beds with canopies that provide a touch of elegance. We're sorry to spoil that charming aesthetic feature for you. Those roof coverings weren't just for show. Pests, beetles, and droppings frequently fell through the roofs of medieval homes and into the beds below. Canopies were first developed to prevent unwanted debris from landing on freshly made bed linens. The lamb's wool was used as toilet paper by Royal. Before the commercialization of modern toilet paper in the mid-19th century, individuals had to get creative with how they cleaned themselves. If we ignore the times before medieval Europe, when people weren't afraid to get their hands dirty, we may get to that era quickly. Since most people lived in property, they had to make do with whatever materials they could find, such as moss or leaves. No results from a random forest would satisfy the aristocracy. Kings had servants whose sole responsibility was to wipe their bottom with lamb's wool or delicate towels. The royals employed enslaved people to clean up their stools. Using the restroom was already mentioned earlier because of how unsanitary it is. It was customary for royal to empty chambermaids, also known as the groom of the stool. If the king or queen needed to use the restroom, they would sit on the closed stool, a plush velvet box used for such occasions. Their servant would come in handy after they were finished and take out the trash. This was a particularly coveted position for a servant, even though it involved frequent contact with the king's excrement. Because they needed someone to talk to, many grooms of the stool became close friends with their stoolmates. The job entailed sitting with the king while he defecated each morning, and in some respects, it was not unlike that of a therapist. These gentlemen were even addressed as sir and had their portraits painted. The European Continent's Bath Fear According to legend, the Crusaders were so taken with the concept of Turkish baths that they carried them back to Europe. Public Turkish baths were widely used as a part of daily life in Turkey. People in medieval Europe had some bizarre ideas. Everyone from royalty to commoners was afraid to get wet during the 14th through 18th centuries because of widespread infectious diseases like the plague. So they avoided using water and instead relied on linens that could be easily replaced. Even in the 21st century, people are still worried about drowning. As one might expect, the lack of central heating during the West's long cold winters made even taking a bath a significant inconvenience, if not downright terrifying. Many were concerned that they would catch a fatal case of the chilly weather and perish. It was not uncommon to see children from wealthy, aristocratic families scream in terror as they were given their first bath. Writer Catherine Ashtonberg claims that Americans were just as dirty before the Civil War as their European counterparts. Still, the Union's success in reducing disease through hygiene campaigns convinced its citizens that keeping clean was progressive and patriotic. The first modern-style full-immersion baths appeared in Europe in the 19th century. Making a hot bath, filling the tub, and draining it all seemed like too much hassle. On rare occasions, however, guests at inns will request the luxury of a hot bath. Every day, most people took what we now call a sponge bath in still existent basins and pitchers filled with plants. Homanders were carried in case of unpleasant odors, and they were also used for decoration. Drying your hair in the Middle Ages Women have been covering up gray hair with dye since at least the Middle Ages. Different tonics were used to help women who were losing their hair. A woman's hair could be dyed brown using fruit, tree bark, or leaves. On the other hand, having blonde or yellow hair was seen as more desirable. 
during the night, women would keep a mixture of honey and white on their heads. Calendine roots, olive matter, cumin seed oil, box shavings, and saffron were added to the concoction. This needed to stay in their hair for a day. And after the day had passed, the women washed their hair and their hair color would be noticeably lighter. One of the most common styles with a golden blonde hue, much like today. Learning how effective this medieval recipe was at coloring hair would be fascinating. Body hair was seen as unattractive for women and was told to be removed. Women were under the same kind of pressure to completely shave their bodies as they are today. Women would use tweezers as pucks, but they would also use dried cat feces to clean the skin and remove hair. The following excerpt from the 11th century text, De Ornitu Malarium, advises the following. To eliminate hair permanently, try rubbing the affected region with vinegar, ant eggs, red or mint, and ivy gum. The church's clergy was outraged by the woman's apparent lack of self-awareness and declared that waxing and shaving to attract men was immoral. However, women in most paintings of the time were shown to be wholly barefoot and hairless, even in the genital and pubic regions. Stories from the time, such as those in Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, describe women's pubic hair, suggesting that this must have been a luxury item available only to a select few women. That's it, everyone. Which of these practices do you find the most disgusting? Let us know in the comments. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so you'll be the first to know about new videos.